right now. We give God all the praise, honor, and glory. This is your host, Elder Anton Seals, and I am shouting glory, hallelujah, to the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, as he is an awesome God, a God that cannot fail, a God that knows our beginning mm -hmm. and our end, and we just thank him for all that he's doing in our lives, seen and unseen. And to all of you that are uh, listening and listening and uh, watching and uh, online with us live and otherwise, God, we just thank people for being on today. My screen went out, and so we're back. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Brother Clarence Brown, for being on, and we give God all the praise, honor, and the glory. Uh, this is Elder Anton Seals, and in light of my wife not being on right now, <clears throat> But we thank God for her presence of just being a wonderful, awesome woman of God. And I thank God for all of you that are watching today on Facebook Live. And 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 I'm excited because this is just a new challenge of teaching on the breast, the breastplate of righteousness, putting on the whole armor of God and 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 understanding what it means. This is part one of, of a three-part series out of the book, The Tabernacle Dwells in You. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just praise you, we exalt you, we thank you for what you're doing, seen and unseen, as we give you the praise, honor, and glory. For you have given us your spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare garments, oh God. We have on the whole armor of God that we can't do it on our own. We can't put this on just because we say we study the word. Lord, you give us this and to all believers, all of you that confess the name of Jesus, he says that you are now in the army of the Lord. And so, Lord, guide us, direct us, save our cruel world. Use your people of God, the believers of Jesus Christ, and the believers of the, our Lord and Savior, our triune God, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or even think, who knows the beginning and the end. So everything that we're experiencing, there's already an end to it. And so, Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy is sufficient to keep us in this time of trouble. As we go into this lesson today, for those of you who have books, uh, I'm in uh, chapter six. And, and I want us to start today on page, I think it was 149. Uh, 149. I did an outline for those who have been in the class. I sent some of you. Uh, a copy of this so that you would have it. And this lesson today is coming right out of, and actually we could actually start on page 147, uh, but the text starts on 148. The scripture reading you can find on page 147 if you have the book. Otherwise, go to Ephesians 6, 10, and 8 through 18. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. I am going to try to teach this without do talking too, too fast because there's so much in it. And I want us to, to grab hold of this today. I, I want you to really grab hold of this, this, this teaching. Uh, I want to share uh, the outline and um, the text today as much as possible. So I'm gonna be going in and out. You see my head bobbing and trying to manipulate the screen. Uh, but I want all of us to grow to understand just how God has prepared you to be on the battlefield for the Lord. And so today we're on in the class and we're going to be talking about uh, Ephesians 6.10, put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. And I'm asking you to do this because I know that it will be a blessing to all of you that, that are uh, on live with us, all of you that are uh, Zooming in, I, I want to thank you all for being on board with us right now in the name of Jesus. This is a challenging lesson, but a, a much needed lesson. And so I'm excited by the presence of God in all of our lives just to go forward. Ephesians 6 through 10, and to give a shout out to Elder Jennifer Seals, my lovely wife, my sweets. Um, thank God for her. And this is Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Put on the whole arm of God. And so we're putting on something that, that we don't deserve, that we didn't purchase it. It's a gift. It's the armament. It's the, the cloak of, of the presence of God 
the spirit of God, but he is a spirit. And they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And so we put on this whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And finally, almost as a summation, almost as if Paul is beseeching us, brothers and sisters, people of God, be strong. He's given you strength. Lean not to thine own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. I'm paraphrasing as I go through this because I, I want us to understand just more than just reading it. But understand when he says, I've given you strength, for he is our strength. God is our strength through Christ Jesus. And so in the power of his might, it is not your power. It is not my power. This is the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil, uh, the, uh, uh, we, we can read this in, in uh, uh, Psalms 91, I think it is, where it talks about the snares. And, and But the snares are the traps of the fowler. Who's the fowler? The fowler is the evil one. That's Satan. That's all the demonic forces in the world that he releases in the, as he is the prince of this world. But we're in this world, but not of this world. And I want you to know that you have a mind of Christ. When you confess his name, believing in your heart and, and uttering it with your lips and believing it in your heart that Jesus is the resurrected son of God. He stands at your door, beckoning you to let him come in, to let him sup with you, to eat with you, to provide for you, to do everything that he promised. And so he's given us these warfare garments to put on. But we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities. We're wrestling with situations in our world today to make it more applicable. We're facing unusual weather changes, climate changes, a tremendous hurricane that's heading to Miami. It's already hit different parts of the world. It's hit Puerto Rico. So we want to lift those uh, individuals up who are suffering in Puerto Rico. We want to lift up people in Canada that got the tail end of that storm. We want to lift up people all across the, uh, what is that, the East Coast that are uh, taking shelter even right now, preparing for the storm that's coming off the, the Gulf and off of the uh, Atlantic. And so, God, we just asked you to, to heal our land and, and, and cover us. But we're wrestling with principalities and powers and situations that are out of our control. We wrestle against the rulers of darkness. But I want you to know that when you confess the name of Jesus, he drew you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. For he is the light. He is the light, the life, and the way, and the truth. Everything that you need, God has already provided it. Yes, he allows us to go through the storms of life, but he said he'll even call us out into the storm that we can walk on the water if we put our hands in his hand. So what am I telling you? That as we read this scripture, begin to understand what it's really saying, that when you wrestle with these things of the flesh, with these things that are facing us in this world, the racism, the hatred, the bitterness, all the things that you experience, that's darkness. That is not the light of God. And so we're battling against this spiritual wickedness even in high places, people with power, people with money, who, who are hateful and, and, and prejudiced, people who, who don't have a heart for God's people at all. And so I'm reading this in verse 13, wherefore take upon you the whole armor of God that you're able to stand. The armor is really the word of God, the truth of God's word, because God is truth. He, so when you read truth and righteousness, it is God. It is the spirit of God. God's word is true and it is right. Well, what does right mean? It gives you a moral compass, an ethical compass. It is your uh, a GPS system, if you will. Your, it positions you to live for the glory of God. It equips you to know how to travel in this world. He's God gives you a road map. Hallelujah. So he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. So follow him. He's the life. And so follow him. And so we put on the whole arm of God that we may be able to stand in this evil day. And, and we're in the evil day. And having done all, he's, he's saying to us, Paul is saying to us again, to, to all that you can do, stand for God. Stand up for truth. 
Stand up for righteousness. Stand up to spread the, the good news, the gospel of Jesus. Stand on the solid rock that was once rejected, that rejected stone, who is Jesus. Stand and having your loins girded with truth. And that truth is the word of God. And having on the breastplate, the high priest wore a breastplate. Now you as a priest, Revelations 1, 5, and 6 says, with his blood he has given us to be his priests and king, lower K, lower P, priests and king, priests over our families, king over the things he's given us rulership and ownership of, but we're still proprietor, proprietors of everything that is in this world. He's only made us to be stewards over proprietors that we have to take care of it. And your feet are shotted in the preparation of the gospel of peace and the gospel in the preparation, the feet shotted. That means that there's some rooting that's taking place. There's some strengthening that's taking place. There's some undergirding in the word of God and your relationship with God. I want to point out right here before I, let me finish this apostle. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, um, above all things, taking on the shield of faith. The shield of faith is the spirit of God's word. You're taking on God's word. You're taking on God's word. Hallelujah. The word is faith. The faith is, is the seed. Luke 8, I think it is, or Luke 10. Luke 10 tells us that faith is a seed. That seed is the spirit of God. And wherefore, we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts when you have this shield, the shield of the word of God. It, it protects you. The helmet of salvation is so key to this because the battle is not some demons running around outside just in the world. They're also what we think in our minds because we have a cardinal mind. And so the helmet of salvation that keeps our mind stayed on Jesus when we call on his name, the sword of the spirit is the word of God that he gives us a shield and a sword, which is the word of God that we can do always and use always when we pray, always with all prayer, uh, praying for others and lifting up the bloodstained banner, watching therefore with perseverance. In other words, no matter how difficult it gets, keep pressing forward, brothers and sisters in Christ. Keep standing up for others. It says pray if it's uh, perseverance and supplication for all saints. Saints meaning those who people who are believers as well, even the non-believers. He even tells us to pray for our enemies. But here, the supplications that you're offering prayers up because servants, these, these are these are a saint is a servant. We're, we're not talking about the natural man. We're talking about people who have a will to serve God. And so we want to lift up all mankind and people that we want to pray for in particular, but we want to pray for the nation, pray for people that you don't know, pray for countries, pray for the world to find peace and, and restore uh, equality that other people that are suffering, we don't just put them through things because we have power. And so we put on this whole arm of God. And I, I wanted to start this lesson so that you understand as we go into this lesson that that part of this is to understand and the teaching of this today uh, as we go into this lesson to to share with you that the, the importance of, of me sharing this this word with you today is to get you to understand whose you are in God through Christ Jesus and that there is a, a comforter and, and that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so as, as we go off on, off in, on and off screen to share with you the teaching today, I, I wanted us to get into, first of all, 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. We talk a lot about what's in the world, but you are a chosen people. You are a chosen generation. Every generation, you are chosen. All people were created in his image. Everything, according to the book of Colossians, everything that was created was created by God and solely to, for his purpose and that he would get all the glory, that he will be glorified by mankind. He, even, even the mountains clap and, and the birds shout and sing, hallelujah. They, the, the, the animals have uh, understanding that there's a greatness in this universe that they didn't create themselves, but ye are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, you're peculiar. 
You're in the world, but you're not of the world. So this truth of righteousness of Christ and the word of God is the, is the word itself. It is the, it is the mind and the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh. And, and so when the world was dark and void, God created light and separated light and darkness. He, he's the only one that could have done that. And so the word is a double-edged sword. It cuts asunder truth and falsehoods. It cuts asunder um, darkness from uh, light and, and light from dark. Uh, it, it separates the evil from the good and the good from the evil. Hallelujah. The wheat and tares still grow together, uh, but, but this is what God has done. He's given us to understand that you as a believer, that you acknowledge that the word is true, that, that you're acknowledging that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, and that there's an imparting of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is the right righteousness of God, the mind of God that guides you to do what's right in the sight of God. And so you can't separate even right uh, from, from righteousness and, and righteousness from the breastplate because they go together because it's the truth of God's word. And so he made it all for his glory. And so his garments are given to new babes. And so when you confessed with originally, when you confessed with your mouth that uh, out of Romans, I think it's uh, 10 and 8, um, and 9 and 10, that you can go through that and understand that, that you confess believing in your heart that you believe and you surrendered to God, and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus who died in the rose on the third day, and is now seated at the right hand of God, who is the judge and has judgment over us. He reconciled you and I because why? Because he was made to be sin, and yet he knew no sin. So the righteous God named Jesus in the, in the, in the form of flesh, the incarnated one, the visible, invisible God, who put on flesh that came through the womb of a woman, the same that you and I did, his name is Jesus. And, and so we listen to the teaching of the word that reveals his righteousness as fine white linen that Jesus now bestows upon you when you can when you surrender when you confess the name of Jesus as you come by faith Revelations 3 and 4 through 6. Revelations 3, 4 through 6 says, as you come by faith, remember what I shared with you a moment ago? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance, everything that you're hoping for, make sure it's aligning with the will of God because faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The word of God, because it is the seed of God. It is the breath of God. It is the very presence of God, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that gave man Man to write men and women to write, uh, well, men to write this Bible, but women played a major part even in the birthing of the church and the leadership of Christianity. And so uh, we come by faith, believing in God's word, believing in things that we've never seen, but believing in the impossible because all things are possible through him. And so he says to us, he ordained you as a believer to become a king and a priest. Hallelujah. You are clothed with white fine garments, uh, uh, linen garments representing a separation from the darkness of our world and our fleshly desires. That doesn't mean that we, we don't have a sinful nature. It just means that you don't practice sin because he's delivered you out of wanting to practice and live a sinful life. And so if you are a believer, then, then, then you ought to know, uh, hopefully, that you're not still on the milk of the word, but you chewing on some good meat of the word, that, that this word will help you to grow up and mature, that there's no good thing in this flesh. And so the darkness of this world represents fleshliness of man. It, it represents the humanity and the weakness of man and its sin nature because of Adam and Eve that we were born into the sin nature. And so it is the same righteousness of Jesus, the spirit of Christ that now dwells in you, which destroys, it rooted out, out of the core of your very being. It breaks off, it breaks and destroys every chain. That's the power. So when we're talking about Jesus, when we talk about God and the Holy Spirit, when we talk about putting on the whole armor, we're talking about a relationship and not 
just a friendship, but intimacy so that you, you, David could not take on uh, the garments that Saul had. He had to, to take the rock and the slingshot because that's what God gave him. So the ornament that God has given to you, his righteousness, he'll mature you, but you got to spend time with the father to know how to fight because you're in the army of the Lord. I'm going to go there in just a minute. And so having on the breastplate breastplate of righteousness is your shield, and it's a shield of the faith of God. It is the word of God that protects you, that delivers you, that heals you, that breaks uh, shackles and, uh, and cuts loose fetters and anchors that are holding you down and soul ties and uh, mental illness and, and burden and sickness and disease that comes in this world. And so God says through Christ Jesus that he's broke all of that off of us generations of curses. You no longer just happen to be born into certain diseases in your family. You got to pray that off of you in the name of Jesus. You got to change the way you think, change the way you live because you got on the whole arm of God and it starts with how do you think and so a man thinketh, so he is. So God has protect us. And so this shield of faith protects your heart and your mind. They're synonymous, the heart and the mind and the spirit realm. And from all the deceitful attacks of the enemy, the Lord will reveal to you. That doesn't mean that the hard times don't come. So many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he said, I'll, I'll allow you to go through it, but I'm going to bring you out of it. Hallelujah. As a believer, you you are a seed of Abraham. You, you're from the children of uh, uh, from the tribe of, of Abraham, uh, uh, the family of Abraham, I'm sorry, the, the DNA of Abraham. Uh, uh, Genesis 15 and 6, Moses writes that Abraham was blessed with righteousness because he believed God. Well, what did he do to deserve that, that title? He believed God. He was a sinful man. He lied about his wife and said it was his girlfriend. Uh, he lied in, in many cases. Uh, and so like all of us, we fall short of the glory. So Moses, but Moses writes that Abraham was blessed because he was willing to give his son Isaac up as a living sacrifice. He was willing to give up Isaac, his son, hallelujah, as a living sacrifice. And so the Lord had a ram already laid up for him. Hallelujah. So his son said, Isaac said, where's, where's the sacrifice? He said, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And so righteousness has been given to all who confess this righteousness, this breastplate, this breast plate of righteousness has been given to all who confess, all who believe, all who are trusting in Jesus through, through the power of the resurrected son of the living God. Righteousness has, was imputed to Abraham. It's been imputed into you as a covenant that God made with him that from the very seed of Abraham, all the Gentiles come through the, the, the lineage of the seed of Abraham, hallelujah. And so we have this faith to believe in God, who is the just God through Christ Jesus, uh, whom also justifies the unjust. Uh, Romans 4, 3 and 30, uh, 4, 4, 3 and 7 says, Jesus received the righteousness from God. He said, I received righteousness from God. Jesus also came to justify. Uh -huh. So there, there was a falling away because of the sin of mankind. So to, to get the book straight, the accountants call it reconcile. Reconcile the numbers so everything is in balance. And, and we do that to track, to make sure that that uh, you know, folks ain't stealing the money, ain't, and, and we ain't knocking the business of God, and that we're, we're paying our tithes and our offering, that we're exalting the name of Jesus, that we're adoring our God, our Savior, we're, we're magnifying his name, that we're not trying to take the glory. He says that God has set us, uh, set us free. He, he sanctified, he set us apart. That's reconciliation. That means that, that something took place in the spiritual realm that separates your natural man from your spiritual man because you're both physical and spiritual. There's an inner spirit, that soul that's in you, that live, that living part that you don't control, which is the soul, which is the, the breath of God that's breathing in you, that, that gives you your being. Hallelujah. And so Jesus is standing at the door and he is the good shepherd 
supper and the same spiritual door to the tabernacle at the each gate is what we enter when we call on the name of Jesus. When you bow down and worship him, when when you're in prayer, when you need a breakthrough, when you, when you need the love of God, when no one else can help you, you call on God through Christ Jesus. Lord God, Jesus, help me. Jesus, where are you, Lord? Do you hear me? I need you right now. I can't teach this without you. I can't go on without you. Lord, help us. Holy Spirit, move right now. Quicken the ears to hear, to thirst the more for you, oh God. You raise up your people, oh God, to be a, a banner uh, wavers, oh God, to, to lift up the, the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, to call on your name. The righteous was imputed. The righteousness has been given to you as a gift of salvation, eternal life that he's given you. And he stands at the door with all the power in his hand, standing at your heart, knocking, saying, let me in. It's me. It's God. It's Jesus, Holy Spirit, the triune God. is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. So if you want to follow, you got to have an ear to hear the good shepherd. Ah, John uh, 10 and 9 says, I am the door, and by me, any man. It says, by me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find good pasture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shallow of death, thou art with me. He layeth my head on green pastures. So God is telling us that, that he has some great things for us. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to, to destroy. But our Lord, our God, he comes that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. That he says in Matthew 6, that I will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. And so we give ourselves over as a living sacrifice because now, be because of Jesus, I don't, we don't, you don't, I don't have to give myself, uh, uh, bring myself to the altar with no lambs and rams and bulls. I just come on my bended knees. I come with a heart. I may be driving, I may be walking, but I'm calling on the name of God. I'm calling on Jesus because God says, I don't hear you unless you honor and, and reverence the holiness of who he is in Jesus. Hallelujah. And so to open the gates of righteousness, he, Psalms 118, 19 to 22. Psalms 118, 19 to 22 says, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. I will praise. This David saying, Lord, open the gates. I'll praise you, Lord. This gate of the Lord is the gate into righteousness. In other words, Lord, let me into your presence so that I can hear what it is that you have planned for me, for your people, God. Uh, let us have an ear, God, that you can equip us on how to fight against things that come against us, how to hold our marriages together. Lord, help us to save our children. Lord, help us to be a light in the midst of the darkness. So, Lord, help us, O oh God. So we enter into his presence and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for us. And he did. He walked amongst us and man could not receive him. He entered into the world with no sin, but he became sin. He was cursed, hung on a tree crucified, died, and buried, and on third day arose. They beat our Jesus so badly. So we know that to follow him means also that we're going to suffer some. So you've got to understand you're in a spiritual war. So open the gates of righteousness by studying this word of God. It's like taking your Bible and opening it up because I don't know where it's going to teach you what it's going to teach you. I don't know where it's going to take you, but I promise you that it will take you beyond anything you may experience in the natural because it is a spiritual work of God. It's the living word of God. This gate, the Lord of the Lord, which is the righteous and the righteous shall enter in. So, so I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art my salvation. This is, this is David in Psalms 118. He's saying this gate, O Lord, which is, which the righteous shall enter. That's the people of God, like you and I, who are believers that were lost, that have been redeemed by the power of God's word. I will praise thee 
for thou hast heard me. God hears your prayers. If you're sincere, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Notice that David's decree opened to me the gates, opened to me the gates of righteousness again. Also, I want you to know that this white linen represents the purity. It represents, and, and part of what I'm asking us to do is get in a place where we reverence the holiness of God, reverence the name of God, reverence all that God is doing in your life through Christ Jesus, the purity, the holiness of God. And he's given it to you and I, to the saints of God, the children of God, the sheep of God, of his pasture. In the book of Revelation, Paul, Apostle John calls it the garments of salvation, the robe of righteousness that Jesus covered you with when you accepted the, the name of Jesus as your Lord and Savior in your heart. Revelation 19 also shows us the vision of saints dressed in white linen sitting around the throne in heaven. That's when the children entered from the outer court. They entered into the presence of the righteous of God. Wow. See, there's an outer court, there's an inner court, and there's a holy court. And there's still those three parts that exist today. I want you to imagine when you go to church, your parking lot is representative of the world, the outer court. When you go through the doors, you're entering into the holy court where the, the, there is the menorah, there should be some light of God shining. Hallelujah. There's no, no more just a candlestick, but the light of God in the people of God, that there should be some love, there should be some thoughtfulness and kindness and gender. There ought to be some fruit hanging, hallelujah, representing the presence of God, that there ought to be understanding and temperance for one, for the other, that the Lord's gates are open. F also F it represents opening the sanctuary door. So you're coming into the holy place and you're coming to the altar to pray. That prayer that, that he rent the veil that allows you in your prayer life, that he'll usher you in. But we know not even how to pray without the unction of the Holy Ghost. So we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That's Psalms 100, 4 and 5, Psalm 100 four and five, into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and everlasting. His truth, his truth. So here we see again, he is truth that endureth for all generations. Hence, it is essential that you grab hold of and value the process of your inner court relationship with sacrifices and offerings and praise and worship. Similar to the priests, believers are to pray. You're the priest now. You're, you, you've been cleansed by the blood. You've been dressed and anointed with the oil of the presence of the Holy Spirit, not just some oil in the, in the, uh, in the, in the vials <laughs> that we pour on you or rub on you, but this is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that shows up on Jesus when John baptizes him, and he comes up out the water, and Jesus, God says, I am pleased. This is my son whom I am very pleased. As, as a child of God, you are blessed with this, this gift, this garment, uh, this wrapping, uh, this undergirding of salvation. It's a garment of the righteousness that God promised you, it is the presence of God that dwells within the soul of believers. This is the annual day of sacrifice unto God. This, see, they only had one day called the annual day of atonement, at oneness with God. That's what that means. Uh, I think it's, uh, we're in that season now, um, of, I think in the Jewish community, Jewish faith, um, uh, Yom Kippur, that would be this time of the year, in uh, late September, first week of October. And so they celebrate. Uh, but but I, I, I want you to know that you can celebrate Jesus and, and you don't have to go through no rituals. All you need to do is confess his name. All you need to do is bow down and worship him. All you need to do is have a sincere heart at the altar of prayer, wherever that is. That could be in your closet. That could be in, in your kitchen sink, standing there washing dishes, talking to God. It could be at your computer. It could be at your desk on your job. And the people got on your last nerve. 
<laughs> so I, I just want to point these things out because we read this without the context of understanding just how valuable our relationship is required of us with God through Christ Jesus. And so uh, Aaron made some, uh, some beautiful clothes that are uh, worthy of a high priest. That's, that's what God told him to do. He says uh, in Exodus 28, 1 through 5, uh, Moses, I want you to make Aaron. I said Aaron made, but I want you to have some robes made. And they got to be beautiful cloths that are worthy of a high priest because he wanted to set you apart. So the beauty of God's love and his holiness that's in you sets you apart from everything and everybody else that's not, that's not doing the will of God. Aaron is, is to be dedicated as a high priest, ordained, <laughs> dedicated, uh, made a commitment. He made a commitment to serve. Have you made a commitment to serve God? In the New Testament, Jesus gives believers this whole armor of God. The Lord is omniscient. He knows when you're prepared to operate at what levels in your ministry, what level on, on whatever job, whatever courses you're taking. He knows exactly the very hair on your head. And so the Lord prepares us. The anointing with the holy oil is required of all believers. This is not, as I said, just some oil, olive oil. This, this is the spirit of God. And I'm going to point out some more scriptures to you. I share with you one Peter, and I share, I want to go to you to Ephesians 5.16 that says that the redeeming of the time, the days are evil, but God will redeem you. He, to redeem means to take back. To, to reconcile means to, to repay or to balance out, to reclaim you because you had fallen into the sin nature. You were born into it. And yet you try, but you try so hard, you still fall short of his glory. That's why we need to have a sincere prayer life so he can keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. And so if you have the handouts, and many of you don't, but that's okay. Truth and righteousness. Truth is the righteous again, and it's God's word. Uh, let, let us make no mistake. Let's go to Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Why? Because he clothed me. He is my God. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is my King. He is my Shepherd. His name is Jesus. He clothed me with the garment. He saved me from myself. He covered me with this robe of righteousness. Psalm 61 and 10 also says that as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, beautiful ornaments, and the bride herself is adorned with precious jewels. Mm. Additionally, you will also receive the spiritual warfare armaments and ornaments called the whole armor of God. This is armament. This is not just uh, some clothing. This, this is the battlefield you, material. This is the equipment to prepare you to be on the battlefield for the Lord. Uh, Ephesians 6, 10 that I, I read to you identifies, illustrates the six uh, uh, pieces of, of ornament he gives you. And, and it's the, I refer to it as your holy warfare regalia, your holy warfare outfit. Uh, you got on the soldier's outfit. You, you may be in the Air Force. You may be in the Navy. You, you, you may be in the Marines or the Army. You may be in Special Forces. Everybody got a different uniform, but this one, this one <laughs> is a holy guard. Mm -hmm. and, and believers, God, the people of God, you are chosen vessels, the elect of God. Yeah, yeah. This speaks of the spiritual warfare that you encounter as Christians, as believers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You, you, you understand that you're going through some things, that you're battling some things that you cannot understand, but God will give you a mind that stayed on Jesus. And so I, I, I just want you to, I'm going to point out some scriptures here for you so we can, can bring you back into this Give me one second, please, brothers and sisters in Christ. I just thank you so much for, for being with us right now and hold on to the unchanging word of God. This is in the afternoon on this Thursday, uh, excuse me, this Tuesday on the 27th. And yes, I am uh, uh, making some adjustments here as we continue to just praise God for what he's doing, seen and unseen. And so we go now, I want to share my screen 
uh, looking to get back into my screen so I can share this with you. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. Hallelujah. I thank you, Brother Clarence. Hallelujah. Your faithfulness to God. May he bless you abundantly and just continue to pour blessings out in your life. Hallelujah. But I, I want to take you to, to uh, the, the handout and some scriptures that I prepared uh, with and for you uh, today. And, 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 and in this particular passage, I, I want you to, to hear uh, in the writing some things that I shared in the scripture text. I, I share with you uh, Isaiah 60 and 10, but I want to take us now uh, to uh, what, what I refer to as um, Romans 8 and 4, 14, 16. Believers, you are adopted as children and sons of God. Therefore, you are enlisted. Wow. Now, now notice, uh, originally I, I shared with you in Isaiah, I will greatly rejoice. Rejoice. That was Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he clothed me. Now, I want you to know that in Romans, in the New Testament, under the grace of God's word, through Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 14, believers are adopted as children. He calls you sons of God, children of God, daughters of God. Therefore, you are also enlisted. You've been drafted. You've been included when you confess your name. You, when, when you confess his name, you were drafted into the army of the Lord. And that you can find that in 2 Timothy 2 and 3, New Testament. Old Testament, Exodus 7, 4, God told Moses, Moses, go get my army. <laughs> they did something in Exodus 7, 4. Exodus 7, 4. I'm going to see if I can pull this up on the screen for you. Uh, I'm going to teach this right out, out off this page here. Ah, oh, glory to God. Lord, help me get this screen so we can share this with people so they can see this. Um, and this, this, is, this is what I wanted you to see, that, that he's saying to you right here. I'm going to blow this up just a little bit more so that you can see this, where he says, Romans 8, 14, believers are adopted. Then he says in 2 Timothy that you and the soldiers, you're soldiers in the army of the Lord. Then he goes to Exodus 7 and 4. Exodus 7 and 4. He's telling Moses, Moses, to bring forth my armies. Mm. As many people of Israel that came out of Egypt. I, I, he says, bring forth my armies and my people of Israel out of Egypt. Bring forth my faithful. Like any well-trained, disciplined army uh, of soldiers, you must believe. You got to believe God. You got to honor him. You got to obey. You got to reverence who he is. How do we reverence him? By adoring him, by exalting his name, not just asking him for stuff, but keeping his commandments to spread the gospel, spread the good news, to, to be kind one to another, to love your neighbor as yourself, and also learn to love yourselves. Christians must continue to open their hearts, your mind, your soul, to become chastened, to be instructed, to be disciplined by the reverencing and the honoring the will of and the plans of God. Let me read that again. We, the believers, Christians, who are in Christ Jesus, must open our hearts, their hearts, your minds, our souls, to become chastened, meaning that we no longer are the same. We become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, man, see, the chastening will, and, and the trials and the tribulations and the storms of life chasing you. They, that's like taking a, a physical whipping in some cases, a mental whipping. You, you just go through some stuff where you know you can't, can't make it without God being in your life, without Jesus being, without the move of the Holy Ghost, without hearing the leading of the Holy Spirit, that I, I have an ear to hear my Father in heaven, 
who instructs and gives discipline. He disciplines me. And, and I learn to reverence his holiness the same way as a child. You, you grew to reverence and honor your mother and your father if you were fortunate to have a dad that loved you and a mother that loved you. But, but God is the ultimate love. Hallelujah. Your obedience to God's word by faith is even better than sacrifices. Jesus wants your love and faith in him to believe that you are truly called and anointed by him. Ah, you are in the army of the Lord and you can do all things through Christ <laughs> who strengthens you. The whole armor represents, represents God's grace. It represents faith in God's word through Christ Jesus for you have surrendered. You have a repentive heart. Hallelujah. You, you have a mind that stayed on Jesus. You, you have a contrite heart that, Lord, I'm heartily sorry for sinning against you. Lord, I, I want to ask you to forgive me, but Lord, I need your help to, to give me a spirit of uh, uh, forgiveness, even to forgive myself as I forgive others, and I forgive others so I can forgive myself. And, but Lord, if I don't forgive, then you won't forgive me either. A willing servant who loves the Lord with his whole heart, his whole mind, and his whole soul. Mm. The white again represents the presence of God. His righteousness is presented when you confess as a believer. The light of God that's shining in the midst of darkness allows others to know that Jesus lives in you. These, these, are, uh, these garments, these, this breastplate of righteousness, it's not seen by the naked eye. Uh, you, you can't see it. You, you don't even know what it is. <laughs> the six parts of your armament include girded, having girded your waist with truth. That's your buckler. A breastplate of righteousness. That's the word of God. Having your feet shouted in the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that you go into all the world spreading his good news. Above all things, take the shield of faith, the shield, the faith. So faith, God's word, is a shield. Hallelujah. God's word, his seed, his spirit protects you. It's a shield. In the old days, in the, in, in the days of, 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 of Moses, they put blood on the doorsteps and do, on, the, on, the, on the portals of the door, around the framing of the door, so that, the, so that death would pass by. Mm. And now we have the bright morning star, which is Jesus, the son of the living God, the light of God, the shining in the midst of this dark world that Jesus lives in you and I. No one can, can just go put this on, this, this holy spirit-filled garment or the whole arm of God without the grace of Jesus. Ah! <laughs> See, it took Jesus to die for you and I. This is a gift. This is a gift given to you. It's God's gift through his son, Jesus. It is the gift of grace. Through Jesus Christ, the favor of God that's upon you is more than just a favor. It's a promise that I'll be with you. Even when your body is worn down, believers who love the Lord are as a sweet smell in his nostrils. I, I, I knew I wasn't going to get through this lesson today. Oh, and I'm, I'm talking slower, but I, I, I just I want you to know I love, I love God. Jesus anointed you with precious oils, priestly robes, garment of praise, blessed prayer of righteousness, his grace, and by his grace you are now, you now have on the whole armor of God. You have accepted Jesus, confessing, believing in the Son of, of God, our resurrected Jesus. You become and you've become and you are a soldier in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers in the army. Are you a soldier in the army of the Lord? If you are, then we ought to see some battle wounds because there's a war going on. And this breastplate that you wear, 
it ought to have some 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 dings and some dents <laughs> because there's been some attacks. So you not only accept it, but you're in him. The gift of the Holy Spirit that dwells and lives and abides in you. Jesus is our light. He is our sword. He is our shield. He is our breastplate. He is our buckler. He is our, 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 our feet are shotted. So we're walking a kingdom walk. Colossians 2, I'm not going to read all of this, but 6 through 12. As ye have therefore received Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. <laughs> See, your feet shot in the preparation means that I'm walking in divine uh, path of God that, that as, as he calls us and says, I'll sit you in a heavenly place and I'll reveal spiritual blessings. Colossians says, so we can, so we walk ye in him. Well, if you don't have a prayer life, how do you know him? How do you, if you don't study this word, how do you know the voice? How do you know the leading if you never even try to call on him? You, you never surrender uh, and let go of selfishness and self-righteousness. So we're rooted and built up in God through Christ Jesus. We, we rooted up in Jesus, established in the faith, established in his word, established to do great exploits. Greater greats shall you do. Be aware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. That's why I, I encourage you to encourage one another, but you don't need validation from anyone else. You are enough. You God gave you everything. He says, in second uh, in Colossians 2 and 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. As ye have therefore received Jesus, you have also received the fullness of God. You are complete. My God, everything that you need is in you. You are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we got we to gotta get notice. <laughs> he says that, that ahead of all principalities and power, that's the power of God on your life that operates through you to battle against these principalities and evil in high places and the wickedness of this world. So when you're complete and you got on the arm of God, he says, call unto me, all ye that are heavy laden now. I'll even give you some rest. <laughs> I'll quicken you and renew you. For the king of glory has come in. And so as we continue to, to go into this, he says you're complete. Putting off the old sins of the flesh. We don't have to go through no circumcision. But he says that cutting away is the, is the entrance of becoming a new creature. It's buried with him in the baptism wherein you are risen again, <laughs> which means you're going to go through some persecution. You, you're going to go through some storms of life like Peter did. Was he, he said, Lord, if that's you, beckon me to come on out here. And Peter's the same Peter that cut off the ear of the soldier and Jesus put it back on him. And same Peter that sinned because he knows the sin nature of all of us. So we've been buried in his baptism only to know and to believe by faith the faith of God's word that's operating in you and I that will raise us from the dead. Now, both the dead and the, we, the we can, our sin will kill us. Sin killeth. Sin killeth. Sin destroys. That's in the natural and spiritual. But when you're operating in the, under the presence of the faith, the shield and the protection of God's word, the, the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that quickens you, that renews you and says that you can do all things through him, that you are his battle axe, uh, that he raised you up from the walking dead, the dry bones in the world. He, he raised you up and called you because you, he found you to be faithful and because you've been calling on him all these years. And it doesn't matter when he comes, but when he comes, he's always on time. Mm, mm, 
So this bless, this breastplate, this 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 breastplate <laughs> in the old and new testament, it, it, it prepared you. Isaiah 59, you can go read it, said that the Lord put this righteousness as a breastplate, as a new babe. You're born again. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. This is the beginning of your new spiritual journey. You're encouraged not to only remain uh, a, a child of God, but now he doesn't want you just to stay on the milk. He, he wants you to get full uh, uh, eating of the word of God. Feed me like a scroll, God. The Holy Spirit is, is also our comforter and will be with you. And he will bring things that he has taught you to your remembrance. Hebrews 5 and 13, the 14, a person who is living uh, on milk isn't very far along in their Christian journey. The solid food is for those who are maturing, who are training, who are becoming disciple, obedient students of the word of God. Also know, remember that the whole armor is, is a metaphor. And again, I say to you, it describes God's word as a shield, a sword, and a buckler, a helmet of salvation. Your feet being shodden in the preparation of the gospel of peace. God strengthens your inner man, your inner soul for this journey called life. You have accepted Jesus and aligned yourself with his word. You're committed to seek the more of the Lord, for he can strengthen you. And he begins to dress you and train you of how to fight this battle how to walk humbly before, how to honor and reverence his holiness, how to step out of greed and selfishness and self-righteousness. Take the moat out of my eye, God. Take the moat out of our eyes, oh God, that we're not so quick to be judgmental. But Jesus changed our garments to a more precious clothing. Not what's on the outside, brothers and sisters, but this grandeur presence of the holiness of God that's prepared not your outer man, but your inner man. He has ordained you as a priest and a king of your home and a kingdom builder for his glory. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, equipped us to do the work right here on earth because it already exists, the perfect plan is in heaven. And he sent you and I to do this great work. Mm, mm, mm. Brothers and sisters, it's getting into the hour. I knew that I, uh, I would not finish this, but I, I wanna close with Genesis 22, one through 18, uh, 2 Samuel 24, 10 and 18, uh, and 1 Samuel 21, 18. This, this is, this is, these are accounts. Um, Genesis 22 talks about the story of Abraham. I mentioned it earlier in the offering of Isaac, his son, as a living sacrifice. And, and then we go to uh, 2 Samuel 2, where David uh, was being punished by God for disobeying God because he took a census of the tribes of Israel and God told him not to do that. And God therefore had released a plague killing over 70,000 men. And then the angel of God stretched forth his hand to slay all the people of Jerusalem. And then the Lord received the repentance, the David's prayers. I want you to know that God hears your prayers, brothers and sisters. And he halt the angel from killing all the people of Israel, of Jerusalem. Gad. David's prophet received the commandment from God's angel telling him to have King David build an altar. Where's your altar of prayer? Where's your flesh, threshing floor of Aruna or Ornan? That was the sacred place that is in the Old Testament where Abraham uh, lifted up Isaac to be offered. And in these scriptures out of uh, 2 Samuel, um, 24, 10 to 18, and First Chronicles 21, 18, either one of those. It, it talks about the altar, but bring it, don't bring to God that which cost you nothing. David built an altar to place his sin offering before the Lord. You don't have to bring a sin offering. You just need to call on Jesus. He paid for your sins. 
He still paid for our sins, but he made a promise. The Lord received the prayers and offering from David, thereby God stayed the slaying of the chosen people of Jerusalem. For I will not offer unto to the Lord that which costs me nothing. What is your sacrifice to be a soldier in the army of the Lord? What are you willing to sacrifice? Are you paying your tithes and offerings? Are you serving God with a willing heart? Do you have a prayer life or you just get on to listen? But do you pray to God? And I'm not talking about to be heard by other men, for he rewards you in secret when you pray to him in secret. So I wanted to share this lesson and there's, I got three or four more pages of notes. Uh, I even wanted to share with you that the relationship that you have with Jesus did away with all the five sacrificial offerings that are found in the book of Leviticus, the sweet savior offering, the meat and the meal grain offering, the peace offering, uh, the sin offering and non-sweet offerings, the guilt and trespass, all that's been done away with. All you need now is to come to the altar of prayer because he rent the veil. All he wants you to do is come into him, all you did have it laden, and I'll give you rest. Revelations 1, 5, and 6, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, unto him that loved us, washed us, cleansed us, sanctified us from our sins with his blood and have made us kings and priests unto God, his Father. Mm. To him be glory and dominion and power forever. As a believer, you must seek to have intimacy with God. You, will, you, you, you got to have this heavenly encounter on a regular. But I didn't say heavy, I said a heavenly encounter, encounters, an experience in the heavenly realms with God. For Jesus has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He, he chose you and me before the foundation of time. It is the will of God. It is his good pleasure. He preordained and predestinated us as his adopted children through Christ Jesus. And it's his good pleasure and his will. That's first, that's, excuse me, that's Ephesians 1, 3 through 7. However, this scripture uh, that we, we are required to live by, this is a lifetime journey of pleasing God, praying, studying, fasting, meditating, and living that others might be led through your walk to be good soldiers in the army of the Lord, a candle of the Lord that brings light and hope, a bridge over the troubled waters. You are a servant. Ministry in Greek means servant. You are a servant of God. You are a servant on a holy assignment to serve in his kingdom here on earth. As the king, the Lord gives you power to watch over yourself and your family. And as a priest, you're called to serve and to pray and witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. He also calls you his ambassadors. The word believer, as I shared with you early on, means that you are servants. So I'm going to close with that because I, 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 I can't get to it all. But I want you to know that the whole armor of God is the word of God. It's your priestly garments. It is the truth and the righteousness of God that we call breastplate. It is the presence of God in your mind that guards you and protects you. It gives you understanding to bear in mind that Jesus is coming back for this church, for you and I. I ain't talking about the physical build. Jesus is the light of the world, and we are to serve God. We are light-bearing children and sons of God. His light is in you. And it's, it's put in you to lead others to know him. You are to imitate his likeness, the likeness of Jesus. Let this mind that be in Christ also be in you. This mind of Jesus, let it be in you. 
For he says, I can do all things according to the power that worketh in, in me, according to the power of his riches that worketh in me, that's in me. Open your heart to hunger, thirst. Seven, John 7, 38 said in the last day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, any man thirst, anybody thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's a spirit. So when you seek ye first the kingdom of God, which is the desire of God, to satisfy your every need, that he'll pour you out a blessing, not just for yourself. He'll open up the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing to be a blessing to others. The Holy Spirit is likened unto you like rivers of flowing water in your belly, and it never runs out. Hallelujah. You are the ambassadors of the Lord. Walk humbly before God, people of God. The bread of life is the word of God that will lead you in all truth. Amen. The Lord is my strength, and he will even make your feet like hinds feet, that you can walk upon high places on rocky ground, and he'll bring you out of the valley of the shadow of death and prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. If you have a chance, go study and read uh, the book of uh, Zechariah in the fourth chapter, where Zechariah is asked by the angel, what are these two olive branches? <laughs> and it's the presence of the Lord, uh, our Lord Jesus and God standing, the two anointed ones that stand by the whole earth, that, that replenish the spirit, the oil, that strengthens you, that keeps you, in the presence of God. God bless you. I pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this word touches somebody's heart, that somebody might come to know you. Somebody may come closer to you. Somebody may come back to you. Some soul that never knew you may give their life to you. Lord, the families are being restored. The world is being restored because this word is so powerful that if all of us claim the name of Jesus and are faithful to his word, we can do extraordinary work because he said greater works. And he's begun a good work in all of you that are believers. Call on his name, be faithful to him. Watch and obey his word, keep his commandments. God bless you, people of God. I pray this lesson has blessed you. God bless you, Elder Seals, when you, if I pray you had a chance or we'll have a chance to look at this. Listen to this. The Lord is a man of war. Exodus 13, 15, Exodus 15, 3 and 6. The Lord is a man of war. So if God is a man of war and the Lord is his name and you've been called to be on the battlefield for the Lord and he's given you these ornaments, what do you think it's for? It's for serving and to taking care of his kingdom, that he get all the glory out of your life. This is Elder Seal, Elder Anton Seals, Brother Anton Seals, just loving on you that this word will lift up your countenance. For we've been in the presence of God. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for sharing with me and teaching me your way. Continue, God, for I'm not worthy. And I bow down and worship and adore you. Help me to learn and to study your word. Guard my mind, guard our hearts, guard your people, God. Raise up your remnant, oh God. Put a hedge of protection around all our families. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Love you with the love of Jesus. Thank you, my brother Clarence and others who are on that I don't see on Facebook. God bless you. Please share this with others. Let me know your thoughts if you don't mind. Uh, there's something you would like for me to teach. I, I may learn something. I will learn something new because I surely don't know it all. And I'm challenged every time I open this Bible. So God bless you. Thank you all so very much. Amen. And in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise his holy name. And until next week, we'll be back in part two. Yes, we're going to do part two next week. Part two next week. Let me see if I can pull up the, uh, I think I can. Yeah, we're going to be in part two next week. Uh, part two, we're going to start off with um, 
mm, requirements of putting on the armament of God. So we're going to go through um, three weeks of teaching on um, uh, Jesus prepares us to put on the whole arm of God. That's going to start next week on page 160 in the book, The Tabernacle Dwells in You. And uh, if you'd like a syllabus and a copy of the notes, the outline, and a copy of the, the book itself, let me know. Write me at ajsmprayerline at gmail, ajsmprayerline at gmail.com. That's Elder Anton Seals. God bless you and peace and blessings to all of you until we meet again. Amen and amen. Amen.